Well, so I've been asked to do a video on how to assemble uh, kit tongs from Forge Knox. Pretty much six basic steps, and you got yourself a nice working pair of tongs. First thing we're going to do is we're going to mark out the boss where we're going to drill. What we'll do after that, we're going to we're going to mark out and split the nibs. Then we'll probably offset the jaws, which will line up the nibs, make them actually work like a pair of tongs. Uh, then we can smooth out the range, but it does make them a lot more user friendly, a lot more comfortable to use. Then we'll assemble the tongs, and then after that, all we're going to do is put them in the vise, uh, put the stock in the jaws, sit it in the vise, set the jaws, uh, then we'll set the reins to suit our grip so that they're comfortable to use. So let's go to step one, marking out the jaws. Mark out the jaws. Um, there's a few ways you can do this. You can probably just eyeball them, get it around about in the center, center punch it, drill it, um, put it on top of the other one, mash drill it in the same spot, or you can mark it out. I prefer to mark them out, I don't know. Uh, I'm probably a bit touched, but I like to do things that way. Uh, you can either mark it out just with chalk. Yeah, we do that, we pick up two opposite corners of the boss with a, with a straight edge, any kind of straight edge, whatever you got. Just mark a line. Then we can pick up the adjacent edge of this side of the boss and the adjacent edge of this side of the boss. It's really not that critical as long as it's Pretty close to the center. We can mark that line and where the cross intersects, that's obvious. And the other way you can get real flash and use some layout fluid. This works a lot better with the steels actually clean. That's probably going to take a while to dry, which is the perfect time to have a beer. Okay, so your uh, layout fluid is oh, more or less dry. Like I said, these bosses are 25 mil. Yeah, pretty close. 25 mil square. Well, that one's a little bit wider. Not that it really matters. All right, so all we're gonna do is just simply halve 20 mil, uh, 25 mil, sorry. All right, so 12 and a half mil. We're just gonna run off these two edges and just Scribe a line on the bottom edge, scribe another line. Don't know if you're going to be able to see that. And that gives you a pretty close to centre mark where you can centre punch your hole. Any machinists watching, um, don't panic, even though these are a good set of calipers. They are very old, they've done a lot of work, so don't yell at me too loud for using them to scribe lines. Well, so I drilled the holes off camera, obviously, and deburred the holes, that's very important. So I've got our holes, remember the, the bottom tong wants to go to the left of the top tong, if you're a right-handed smith. We'll just check to see that the rivet fits, you get the idea. Next we're going to split the uh, nibs. You can either mark these and cut them with a grinder, with a, like a one mil cutting disc. Cut them down to, I'd say probably two thirds the width of the nib. And then you, and then you can forge them out to the shape of your stock. Um, or you can hot cut them with a hot cut chisel. Okay, we're gonna, we're gonna come to the vise. The forge is running, so it's a bit loud. We're 
going to come to the vice to hot cut the nibs. What we're we going to do? We're going to come in with our tong half. We're going to set a piece of uh, flat bar underneath the nib. We're going to tighten up the tong. Start laying out the nib. You can probably lay it out cold. You can do it hot. Totally up to you. Your hot jaw. A piece of flat bar. The flat bar just supports the jaw while you're cutting it. We just eyeball centre. First heat. You can see we've already gone a fair way there, probably probably three mil, maybe four mil. You get the idea. I'll uh, I'll turn the camera back on when I'm just about finished. I haven't finished cutting this yet, but I just want to show you something real quick. What actually does happen as you're cutting it. So remember, keep your quench tank handy so you can cool down your chisel. As you're cutting it, as you're moving back towards the back of the jaw here, the back of the jaw actually isn't supported by the flat part. So no matter how tight you do your vise, that's going to try and push the back of that jaw into the vise. The vice is trying to stop it. But what happens is, the jaw starts deforming. You can see they're starting to push the jaw back onto itself. Okay, so we've got a bit of heat back in our jaw. Just a quick straighten. Keep everything in line where it should be. Come over to the horn. That's over corrected there, that's fine. We can fix that later. Okay, so we split our jaws. I've actually, um, see that? Not really. A bit bright for the camera. I've actually already spread it with this bit of 16mm square bar just to get the, just to spread the nibs out a bit. And now we're going to. Set it in the vise and use the actual um, stock we're making it for, just to sit it in there and just spread those jaws out a little bit better. Just take your end around that way a bit, mate. Yep. Yep. Back in. So that it really spreads those jaws out. smoothing out the reins, uh, getting all these ugly marks out of it. Probably come, oh, I don't know, about 100 mil back from the boss. Start there and just start 
expanding at the corners. Keep the strategy going. Standard technique of rounding out square stock. Start off with square, then you make it octagon. Or as close as you can. Now you can go to full round using this technique. Just keep going until you've got a nice even octagon shape. And then you start rounding off in your usual way, turning the piece. Or you can use one of these. A guillotine tool. Guillotine tool made by a friend of ours and a member of the group. Very simple uh, idea. You would have seen these, they're, not, they're nothing new. Just a set of dies, they happen to be a set of rounding dies. Just a die on the bottom, a die on the top. Stock goes in the, in the hole, and hopefully, you should end up with a round piece of stock out of square. Really simple, just a matter of sitting it in there and Go back in the gear team tool for another heat. Now this can get very tiring. This would be so much easier with a striker. Oh yeah, that's so much easier. And faster. The little thing I bought off eBay, it's called Instant Striker. I think I'll just come in and uh, uh, clean up these sharp edges. In that, around about a bit of 100 mil we left between the boss and where we started rounding off the reins. But that guillotine, that rounding tool, um, it's not perfect. You can do a lot more work with it. But it really does make a nice job of um, rounding things out. Purely aesthetic. I think if your tool looks better, you're going to enjoy using it a lot more. Anybody has a good joke about that, leave a comment. Get from each other. So we have to offset the jaws and then we can put the dogs together. So let's do that. Right, the center of the nib is pretty much in line with the center of the rein. What we want is the center of the nib to be in line with that edge of the rein. So to do that we have to upset oh, where are we? we have to upset that section of the uh, of the jaws. Now I've, I've lost my heat now, so I'm just going to go back for another quick heat, and I'll come back and we'll do that. Okay, now. Set the nib in our vice. Make sure we're pretty straight. We give it a bit of a tweak. And it's actually size specific. I'm setting these for a right handed smith swinging with a swinging hammer with a right hand. Um, if you're a left handed smith, you'd want to offset the jaws the opposite way. But 
since we're all righties around here, this is how we're going to do it. The centre of the jaw is now in line with that side of the rein. Okay, so now obviously I did the other half of the tongs off camera. So by now you should have two pretty well identical pairs of tong halves. So just remember, a right-handed smith hammering right-handed, the bottom jaw is on the left, top jaw is on your right. Flip over, we'll peen down the uh, rivet, we'll free up the tongs because once you rivet, once you hot rivet the tongs, the tongs will actually seize up, don't panic. This is supposed to happen. And we'll free up the tongs. We have our rivet. We have our bottom tongs. Drop pause. Setting our rivet. No, actually, because I dropped the rivet, I've taken too long, I've actually lost my heat. Right, let's have another go at this. Make sure your bosses are sitting together. If you have a gap in between and you set the rivet, you'll probably mushroom the rivet into the gap. That'll affect how the tongs work. Keep checking. Once you've set the rivet, you can start rounding it off. You can get very decorative with it. Now that a rivet is set, those, those those tongs are locked together, they will not come apart. So, into the quench tank, gently start moving the tongs. Move the tongs in and out and apart, and they will just free up naturally as the metal cools. While the metal's hot, it's expanded. And while it's curling, it's contracting. So that will make the all parts of the yeah, probably helps if you've got a bigger quench tank. It just helps all the all three parts of the tongs separate enough so that they can move freely. Okay, so we just put our stock in the jaws, set our jaws in the vise, and just squeeze them together. Look down the centre of the stock and line it up with your uh, boss and through the centre of your reins. That's probably about it for the jaws. I think next heat will um, heat up probably this section of the reins. Okay, so it's about as good as an isolation you're going to get with a gas forge. So we just grab the stock. I've got a bit of six mil flat bar in the vise. I'm just going to bring it up like that and just gently squeeze the reins together until they come, well, until they get to a comfortable position really to hold. Just fiddle with them little bit by little bit until you 
pretty much get them where you where you want them. So we're gonna I'm just gonna cool that off. They actually don't fit in my quench tank anymore. So I'll let them cool naturally for a bit. Okay, we've set our jaws, we've set our range, we're all happy. Everything's where we want it to be, now we can just give it a good, a good brush. Give it a really, really good brush. Get all that scale off. Holy shot that metal a bit. Another one of those steps you don't really have to do it, but like I said, if you take a bit of pride in making your tools, then you're going to enjoy using them a lot more. We're just about at the right heat. That's pretty good. And just give it our coating of wax. Um, I like to put a lot of wax around the boss because that actually gets drawn into the rivet and gives it a little extra lubrication. And cover all your surfaces. Um, the jaws, when you're using them in the forge, they're going to burn the wax off anyway. But um, so yeah, it's not so important, but it does look pretty. Uh, the reins on the other hand, get, try and get them nice and waxed up. Some people use a light coat of wax, I use a heavy coat of wax. I like lots of wax. The beeswax smells good when it's burning too. It smells a lot better than boiled linseed oil anyway. Okay, now I'm no tongologist, but it's a pretty nice working pair of tongs. Uh, you can obviously get better. Now you can spend as much time on these as you like, but you should get these done in about an hour and a half, maybe two hours. All depends how how much work you want to put in them, how, how pretty you want to make them. There you have it, nice, perfectly functional pair of tongs and really <coughs> only about an hour and a half, two hours. Two hours at the most uh, to knock them together. Just really quick, really simple. Best of all, really cheap, comparatively speaking. And there you go. So if you have bought a pair of kit tongs from Forge Knox, enjoy the experience. Enjoy making them, make them how you want them, make them to see what you want to use. And uh, thanks for watching.